Mark Hamill will do more than just stare at you from atop a cliff at Star Wars Celebration. We can't say how much more contractually because that's entirely up to Mr. Hamill. Mr. Hamill. It's very serious. This week on The Star Wars Show. And he sits down with the authors of the Ralph McQuarrie art book. We find out what it takes to become an actual keeper of the holocron, and much, much more. Now, from the Lucasfilm headquarters, it's the Star Wars Show. Hello, and welcome to the Star Wars Show. I'm Andy Gutierrez. And I'm Anthony Carboni. And this week's episode is going to be a 10 minute tribute to the greatest character of all time, Wald. No, no it's not. Kidsters, plenty. But Wald is his best friend. And look at his haughty little pose. Let's go to the Wald Watch. <laughs> Wald Watch, day 763. Get that out of here. Hey! Look, it's your line, read. Fine. Once again, starting the news off with Celebration, since you know, it's on the horizon, and any real juicy Star Wars related news for the next few weeks is probably being saved for the event itself. Gigantic wink. The full schedule of programming has been released on StarWars.com. Thursday highlights include the Star Wars 40th anniversary panel at 11 a.m., Smooth Talking with Billy D. Williams at 2, and Ian McDermott and Ray Park together at last in a Sith Spectacular from 4 to 5. Friday morning at 11 a.m. brings us the highly anticipated Last Jedi panel with Kathleen Kennedy and Ryan Johnson, and some small talk with Warwick Davis at 1.30. That is their title, not mine. That is not my Warwick Davis joke. Saturday morning starts with the Rebel Season 4 panel at 11, followed by Anthony Daniels at 1.30, and the Cosplay Championships at 3.30. The final day begins with a droid-centric panel hosted by Warwick Davis at 11 and the closing ceremonies from 4 to 5. The best part is we will be streaming all weekend long on StarWars.com and our YouTube channel. For more details and additional panel information, check out StarWars.com. Hey Andy, you know who's missing from that lineup? Who? Mark Hamill. Funny you should mention that because Mark Hamill will also be appearing at Star Wars Celebration. What? Mark will be headlining his own panel on Sunday, which is always incredible. But most importantly, he'll be hosting a tribute to Carrie Fisher where he remembers the talent, humor, and enduring legacy of the galaxy's most luminous being on Friday night. For more details, check out this link. Star Wars Puzzle Droids, a game I can legit not stop playing because we work here and get early access to such things, is now available for pre-registration on Google Play worldwide. The game is a classic match three style puzzle game with a Star Wars twist and recreates moments from the Star Wars saga told by the droids across classic locations like Jakku and Takodana. Puzzle Droids, the free-to-play mobile game will be available on iOS, Android, and Amazon soon and can be experienced for yourself on the show floor at Star Wars Celebration. Just if you do play it, don't be like Andy and play it during important Star Wars show meetings. <laughs> like anyone pays attention in those meetings anyway. It's just Scott talking about stuff. That's true. You called my bluff. I have never been to a Star Wars show meeting. Liar. How does any of this work? Lies! Deceptions! <laughs> How long is this supposed to be? Because I can, I mean, I, I, I can go for four hours. I'll start from the beginning again. Hi, my name is Leland Shi. I am the Keeper of the Holocron for the Lucasfilm Story Group. When I describe my job to friends, the, the easiest way to do it is to just say, you know what, I'm a Star Wars expert. My job is to know more about Star Wars than pretty much anybody else. This is a holocron. Uh, in Star Wars lore, it is a artifact used by the Jedi that contains knowledge of Star Wars lore. I, in a sense, am the keeper of Star Wars lore, and instead of a holocron, I use a database that I built. I think we have over 80,000 different entries for characters and planets and ships. I wish I could tell you there was a, a career path to becoming the keeper of the holocron. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't. I started at LucasArts as a game tester, coming in with all this history and, and with all this Star Wars knowledge, and actually the first game that I tested was a non-Star Wars game. It's called Herx Adventures. And I was like, I, I, I come in with all this Star Wars knowledge and you're putting me on a non-Star Wars game. Then one of the titles that I tested was Behind the Magic. I was in test for three years, which is a long time. And that's when I saw the posting. There's no such a thing as a typical day for the Keeper of the Holocron. We are involved in so many forms of entertainment, whether it's movies, TV, books. So I could be at one point reading scripts for a film, or I could be reading a manuscript for one of our novels, or I might be tasked to try out the latest VR experience. There really isn't a standard day, and uh, each, each day is great. I did an article for Wired, and in that magazine, they, they commissioned new artwork of me as a Jedi. 
licensing, saw that and got inspired and decided that they'd create an action figure. I gave him a name, uh, Seelig Kenjen. So there is an action figure with my likeness. There are so many, so many memorable, amazing, life-altering experiences that I've had in the 20 years I've been here. This week we are talking all about Ralph McQuarrie with the authors of Star Wars Art, Ralph McQuarrie, Wade LaJos, Brandon Allinger, and David Mandel. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank, Thank you for having you. us, yeah. We've got the book right here behind me, the two volume set, and it's massive. So tell me a little bit about how this project got started. I think it was a book that Lucasfilm wanted to do for some time. They talked about doing it for a number of years, I think. And then I knew David and Wade, and I knew that they were both Macquarie collectors and enthusiasts, so it sort of seemed like a logical assembly, so right, to speak. Right, yeah, you all sort of brought a different element to the book. Because I know, Wade, you brought a lot of like first-hand accounts. Wade, you knew, yeah, Wade actually knew. knew yeah, I, I actually, uh, I had the opportunity to meet Ralph in 1997, and we just became fast friends. So he would just share stories of working on the films, working with Lucas. That's amazing. Yeah. And a lot of those stories are included in the book. It's not just yeah. art. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that was what we, we really wanted to bring to the table was rather than just a catalog of the artwork, which the art, I mean, which would have been fine on itself, right? Yeah, the, people would have loved would that. Have been anyway. fine. I would have been very <laughs> that as well, yeah. But, but we thought, you know, wouldn't it be great to go and really talk to everyone else who was a collaborator with Ralph and try to get their stories? We really did try and treat it like an art book. Like, yeah. this is how you would do a Leonardo da Vinci book. Like an academic which is book a, sort of a Ralph. Chronological yeah. approach to what he was working on. Yeah, there were some interesting things like when we were trying to plot things out chronologically where you would look at stuff that we assumed was for the Star Wars holiday special, like all this Wookiee house mm -hmm. concept artwork. And then you, we sort of determined based on the sequencing, the little numbers that were in the corners of the pages, that those were actually concepts he did for Empire. And so then you go back and you sort of look at the story treatments and the scripts and it's like, well, actually, the Empire script had the Wookiee planet in it. So this was all stuff that he was doing for Empire. And, and then, then they, they cut it, it. Yeah. and well, that put it into the a, holiday special. That brings up another interesting point. I mean, the work of Ralph McQuarrie has been repurposed and, and reused and adapted through the entire history of Star Wars. Do you have any particular favorite designs or paintings that have kind of popped up later on? I love that they use his original Chewbacca design mm -hmm. on Rebels. That one always kills me. Now, I remember the archivist said there's people in there all the time just going through drawers looking at art for inspiration for you know whatever new project they're working on. Which is interesting. This book now finally kind of encapsulates everything he did on these productions. The archives now can be in your hands. Yeah. I mean, we've been, just we've been told done. sort of off the record that over in the UK, they all have copies of the books now and can use it. Floating like, around playing like, with like studios. Kind of, oh, yeah. 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 Quicker, See, you guys, so, yeah. that's great. A point of pride for us. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys for coming by. Oh, this was you. really enlightening. Yeah, this book was us. absolutely gorgeous. You did an amazing job oh, on cool. it. So thanks thank thank again. The captain says you are a friend. I will not kill you. Kenobi! Check out my outfits for Star Wars Celebration. Those are your pajamas. No, that's cool. Star Wars should have said I could wear them. I think they meant that as a joke. Carbone! For the record, you can totally attend in your pajamas. You have our permission totally. to attend in your pajamas. Plus, this year it's in Florida, and like that state has essentially no rules, so you do you. It is a lawless frontier outworld. <laughs> pajamas for everybody. Everyone in pajamas all the time. This weekend, every website is going to be littered with fake trailers and wacky products designed to fool you because April Fool's Day. But not us. We're different. That's right. And by different, we mean we are lazy. Yeah. And we did not want to produce anything extra. However, because it is April Fool's this weekend and Star Wars actually has some really good jokes in it, we want to know your favorite funny moments from Star Wars. Send them to us using the hashtag Star Wars Goofs and we'll feature our favorites here next week. My favorite part is uh, how the Ewoks look like they're cute, adorable teddy bears for children, but it turns out they're murdering people and putting heads on spikes. <laughs> and using them for drums. Ah, yeah, so murder bears. <laughs> Thanks for watching and may the force be with you. Also, you're welcome, Frank. Now you don't have to make an April Fool's package.